Greetings, YouTube. I have probably used the line to take care of your tools and your tools will take care of you 10,000 times in my life, maybe more. It's a favorite saying of mine and it's something that I live by. I don't stress test my tools when it comes to doing reviews because I make every effort to take care of my tools in use. Um, my Swiss tool, multi-tool that I carry every single day of my life. Um, in fact, I, I, I carried it as soon as my wedding vows were over. I didn't carry it while I was saying them, my wife protested, but as soon as it was finished, I put that thing back on. Um, and if you look at it, it looks brand new. It looks like I bought it yesterday because I take care of it. So I am discussing these types of tools, but it's not the only type of tool I'm discussing. I'm also discussing the safety and the most biologically important tool you possess or your little phalanges here, your digits. You take care of these. You don't want to lose them. You don't want to cripple them. And I have damaged my hands many, many times. Um, I am constantly digging metal slivers out of my hands because I work with metal a lot. Um, I burn them. I've banged them. I've crushed them. I currently have a broken nail, which is healing. Um, so, you know, I abuse my hands even though I am taking precautions as best as I can because sometimes the things I do are moderately dangerous. Um, but I make the effort and I try to be careful. It's just nothing is perfect. But I'm also speaking a little more esoterically. If we're going to get beyond the physical, we're going we're gonna to get beyond this and get beyond this. Taking care of your tools also means taking care of your own well-being because your most important tool is your mind and your emotions, your sympathy, your empathy, and your compassion. And if you're going to be a good friend, a good sibling, a good child, a good parent, a good coworker, a good partner, a good lover, if you're going to have good, solid relationships with people who are intimate in your life and with the people you meet in the course of your life, you have to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. You have to make sure that you are centered in balance. And I'm not talking like Buddha like calm, not you know, 24-7. We all get angry. I got angry today at someone, at myself. But I let it go because it wasn't helping me. I got angry. And then I ask myself, okay, the event that you're angry at, where is it? It's behind me. Physically, literally, it was because I had screwed up when it came to driving somewhere today. It's behind me. I am no longer at that physical place. I am no longer, I no longer need to be at that mental and emotional place. I am now moving down the road towards my destination and everything's going to be okay. And the fact that I wasted five more minutes of my day than I really planned to, that's just the way it is. I still got where I had to go. I still did what I had to do. And by letting that anger go, by being kind to myself and accepting that, yeah, it happened back then, it's over, it's done, it's in the past. The past is a book we can learn from but never change. Even if that page that we just wrote happened seconds ago, it's still in the past we still can't change it. So our best thing to do is learn from it and move on. And in my case, I was tired. Um, it's 3.30 in the afternoon and I've essentially been up for 24 hours. So there's a reason I'm tired. So I forgot, I forgot to take a turn. I got myself turned around. Everything's good. So I'm taking care of my tools, myself, my being. There's nothing selfish about this. There's nothing, there's nothing self-centered. There's nothing egotistical about taking care of yourself, about self-care. Because you can't care for other people unless you're healthy. I mean, if your friend's fallen down and broken a leg, and you already have a broken leg, you're not going to be help, able to help them as effectively as if you had two functioning legs. By that same token, if we want to emotionally and mentally support our friends and family and loved ones, we have to be emotionally and mentally healthy. Now, I suffer from mental illness. I don't 
hide that fact. I've, I, 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 I don't think I've hidden it in, in years, de maybe a decade or more, because I finally came to accept it and began to talk about it, and that was the first step towards healing. But it doesn't define me. I don't walk up to people and shake their hand and go, Hi! I'm James. PTSD, depression, anxiety. No. It does come up in conversation. I also don't hide the fact that I go to therapy. You know, when Thursday comes around, I'm like, Hey, it's therapy day! Which puts some people off. But I want it to become normal. I want to normalize the conversation of therapy. Because there's nothing wrong with it. My wife has been going to physical therapy because she has had some uh, slight misalignment with her hip. Needed to get the right kind of exercises, things like that, and she's going to be just fine. There's no shame in that. Hey, I've got to go physical therapy because, you know, my things aren't aligned the way I want them to be aligned. No one's going to call you on that. No one's calling you on for being therapy because you have depression and anxiety either. And if they do, you don't need them in your life. If somebody's being aggressive towards you because you're admitting that you have mental illness or they're, or they're dismissing you, move on. You have better things to do. Take care of yourself. Take care of your tools. And if you do that, and you get better at caring for yourself, you can become a better friend, a better partner, a better family member better member of, of, of the community that we inter engage with every day. And for me lately, self-care has meant not engaging, about being far more cautious about who I'm talking about, about doing a little research about the people I meet online, just a smidge. Are they actual legitimate YouTubers or are they just trolls? Do I really want to engage with this person because he's saying, or she or she is saying something inflammatory? I don't have to. Nobody's making me. I could just move on with my day. And that was liberating. So do what you've got to do as long as it's healthy. And if you need help, talk to a friend, talk to a therapist. I'm a big believer in that. So I guess in closing, take care of your tools. Your tools will take care of you.